Lithium is the third lightest element on the periodic table. It's the lightest metal and least dense solid and has many uses in today's world, from heat resistant glasses and ceramics, to red fireworks, to rechargeable batteries, and even to treating bipolar disorder. This element is, though, highly reactive, for it has only one valence electron, or in other words, one electron in its outer shell. Due to this, lithium is often hidden in chemical bonds with other elements in Earth's crust in the form of minerals. Petalite, lipidolite, and spodumene are common minerals containing lithium. These minerals hide lithium's presence on Earth quite well, and due to this, the element wasn't discovered until the 1800s. The first significant figure in lithium's discovery was a Brazilian mineralist by the name of José Bonifacio de Andrada e Silva. Bonifacio spent much of his early career traveling around Europe, studying minerals and chemistry with fellow scientists. He discovered many new minerals during his time in Europe, including andradite, which is named after him. In the year 1800, Jose was traversing the mines on the island of Uta, located in the Stockholm archipelago of Sweden, when he stumbled across two unknown minerals. The first was a transparent white crystal and was later named petalite. The second was a dull white and gray crystal and was later named spodumene. Seventeen years after their discoveries, a Swedish chemist by the name of Johan August Arvidsson would undergo an investigation with petalite that would eventually lead to the discovery of the new element. Johan August Arvidsson was born on January 12, 1792 in Skaraborg County in Sweden. He was from a wealthy family and had easy access to an advanced education. He studied both law and mineralogy at Uppsala University, earning his law degree in 1809 and a mineralogy degree three years later in 1812. Soon after graduating, while in Stockholm, he met the esteemed chemist Jakob Berzelius, and soon after, Berzelius took him in as an assistant. Arvidsson then, starting in 1816, spent his time in his laboratory in Stockholm, undergoing chemistry experiments. The very next year, he came across the previously discovered mineral of petalite and decided to try and break the mineral down into its elemental components to determine what it was made of. After using chemical reactions to break the mineral down, he determined that the mineral is composed of roughly 80% silica and 17% alumina, and then noticed that he had only accounted for 97% of the total mass of the mineral. After taking a closer look, he found the remaining 3% was in the form of an alkali, or in other words, a salt of an alkali metal. To try and determine the nature of this salt, he suspended the alkali in tartaric acid to try and get some form of precipitate in the form of an already known alkali metal, specifically potassium or magnesium, but saw no such precipitation. Further careful experimentation also ruled out sodium as a candidate, and since these were the only alkali metals known at the time, Arvidsson became convinced that he had discovered a new alkali metal. He showed his results to Berzelius, and together they decided to name the new substance Lithion, because lithic is ancient Greek for rocky, and the new substance was discovered from a mineral. Berzelius then wrote to the French chemist Claudet Louis Berthollet about the new discovery and its naming, and the letter was soon copied and added to the 1818 publication of Annals of Physics and Chemistry. Though Arvidsson used the process of elimination to determine that he discovered a new element, he never in fact successfully separated it into pure lithium. That task would be done a few years later in 1821 by another chemist named William Thomas Brand. The main obstacle Arvidsson faced when trying to isolate his newly discovered element from the salt was battery power. See, Arvidsson was attempting to use electrolysis to split up the salt into its components. I've covered how electrolysis works in a previous video, but in quick summary, the salt is first heated up until it becomes molten, allowing all the atoms to roam freely. An electric current is then applied to attract the negatively charged ions to an anode and the positively charged ions to a cathode. Many salts are split into their components this way. Arvidsson struggled with this though, because he simply did not have the equipment to tackle the job. In 1821 though, William Thomas Brand, a professor of chemistry at the Royal Institution in London, would tackle the assignment with the proper equipment. Brand had succeeded the former chemistry professor there, Sir Humphrey Davy, who had moved up to become the president of the Royal Society by this time. 
Davy was a pioneer of electrolysis as he successfully isolated potassium and sodium for the first time years earlier. Brand continued the legacy of Davy using his techniques on lithium oxide, which was the salt found in petalite, and with enough battery power, he successfully isolated a chunk of pure lithium for the first time. He estimated the chemical makeup of the salt, and after calculating that lithium comprises 55% of the weight of the salt, he estimated the molecular weight of lithium to be around 9.8 grams per mole, which is somewhat close to the modern day accepted value of 6.94 grams per mole. Brand also, around the same time, described a different salt of lithium, lithium chloride, which would eventually become a much easier way to isolate the metal, as lithium chloride has a melting point of 605 degrees Celsius, as compared to 1,438 degrees Celsius of that of lithium oxide. Isolating lithium through means of electrolysis of lithium chloride would first happen three decades later in 1855, at the hands of two chemists by the names of Robert Bunsen and Augustus Matheson. These two chemists worked together at the University of Heidelberg from 1853 to 1856, and were also able to successfully isolate calcium and strontium in their pure states during their time together. This method of lithium isolation would eventually become the method behind the first successful production of the alkali metal on a massive scale. This was done by German company Metallgesellschaft AG in 1923, which used its resources to electrolyze a mixture of lithium chloride and potassium chloride, and eventually bring lithium into the industrial world for widespread use. Arvidsson, within one year of becoming an assistant to Berzelius, had made a significant discovery and seemed to be on a fast track to having a fruitful career in the field. However, his life after his discovery of lithium did not in fact involve much chemistry. He inherited an estate shortly after his discovery and spent the rest of his life maintaining and upholding it. Brand, after his isolation of lithium, continued to teach at the Royal Institution and also went on to become an accomplished writer. His work entitled Manual of Chemistry, published in 1819, achieved widespread popularity after he isolated lithium, and he also published a Dictionary of Science, Literature, and Art in 1842, which also became quite popular. Thanks to these two chemists, and an adventurous explorer and mineralist from Brazil, a highly reactive element hidden in Earth's crust through means of chemical bonds was finally uncovered, and its usefulness in today's society shines brighter now than ever before. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.